will we be having the camp closing picture something to be uploaded on website of camp like in a uh, yes maybe after the lecture yeah yeah maybe i should say that on discord you won't be allowed to join the closing ceremony if you don't attend this lecture <laughs> Nice way to get people, huh? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, let me start. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have a boomer moment. Now. I hope my works. Yes, it's working on first try. Nice. Yeah, okay, so, oh, by the way, did anyone try the problems that I said? Yeah, I was saying that USMO did one. Uh, which one? USMO 2008P5. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's probably one of the best users of linear algebra. Like, that problem is... Pretty difficult. Yeah, I was trying to prove about bringing the A1 into H3 to some constant 0, 0, K. Um, yeah, they will in increase like A1, A2, H3 plus A1 like that. Uh, what? Uh, Which problem? Wait, 2008 problem 5, did you say? Problem I guess. Uh, uh, no problem, I, I did you say? Again, problem 6. Oh, problem okay. six. Okay, okay. Yeah, Let German TST. Uh, no, no USMO. Oh, wait. USMO. USMO. 2008 P5. Uh, have you sent another? Uh, uh, wait, 2008 also? 6 uses linear algebra, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I gave 2008. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, oh, 8 only. Yeah, I, I, I gave you the wrong problem. I, I meant to write USMO 2008 6. Yeah. Uh, uh, you are talking about that uh, problem on vector spaces over F2 uh, thing only, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I meant uh, to give you the USMO 2008 6, not USMO 2008 5. Also, by the way, I, I, I believe badly covered like APIO 2011 uh, P1. Uh, was anyone there giving and his PSS? Uh, when? Yes, yes. I'm pretty sure he covered like API or 2011 uh, P1 because I told him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was also oh, a good example of vector spaces over F2. Oh, that red blue color one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. So it was so related what? to forming situation. What? Yeah, so like that uh, red blue one that combinated. Right? I can't hear you. Anyway. I'll just type in chat if I can't hear you. And, uh, also. Uh, in the in your problem set, you said USM of 2008, six, it is which number, which number problem? Uh, yeah. I asked you to, yeah, I think I posted USMO 2008-5, but I meant USMO 2008-6, so that's my... Yeah, right. you also told that ELMO 2003. ELMO 2003 slash 2, I think. I think that is... When correct. did you told these things? In the announcements, I mean, problem, the problem solutions. Okay, actually... Okay, so which problem should I start with? Any words? Yes, I'm one. Yeah, okay, let's. I think you can just choose the one which you find uh, most uh, uh, elegant. Yeah, please do that. So I'll start with. Uh, uh, six. Okay, so the problem statement was 
there are I think there are some and mathematicians uh, correct me if I give a Uh, spelling is hard. Uh, there are n mathematicians, and some of these mathematicians know each other. So, you, actually, let's not even let's just wait this guy in terms of. Wait, so this is the first problem you're giving them? Uh, what? So, this is the first problem you're giving them to solve? No, this is not the first problem. But this is the first problem I'm going to discuss. I'm not going to discuss all the problems. I won't have time for that. I'm just going to discuss the nice ones. Uh, like okay. the rest are probably pretty easy. So I'm not going to bother. Uh, so suppose you have a graph G, uh, and uh, prove that. The number of ways to write uh, G equals A disjoint union B uh, such that uh, uh, within G is a graph. Yeah, G is a graph. And A, a and B are disjoint subsets of G, subsets of vertices of G. Uh, such that uh, within A, uh, every vertex has even degree. And within B, every vertex has even degree. So, do you understand the problem? So, we, have some... we have all or even? Huh? Uh, oh, uh, you have to prove that this is a positive part of it. So, basically, you have some graph G and uh, vertices, and you have to divide them into two subgraphs. Like you have to select uh, two subsets of the vertices such that the subgraphs induced by them are. Uh, are uh, oh, wait. Uh, we I, have like, like every vertex is we have how much degree? We uh, so, this is a bad example of a graph because the only divisions are trivial ones. Uh, instead, let me draw this one. Yeah, so, and this is A, this is B. So, you have some graph G, and you have to divide that into two subsets, A and B, such that every vertex in A has an event degree, and every vertex in B has an event degree. So, you only keep the edges which are internal to A or B, when you are talking about degrees in A or B. Is the problem clear? Oh, nice. Someone posted that problem in the chat. Yeah, so to give a translation of that problem, so there's a graph of mathematicians and uh, corresponding to friendship. And each mathematician insists, there are two rooms, which are A and B, and each mathematician insists upon eating in a room which contains an even number of these are So every vertex has even degree. Uh, these are the conditions. And you have to prove that the number of ways of doing this kind of a division is a positive part of it. So we can say that uh, xi is one mathematician, xj is two second mathematician. If xi plus xj is zero, then then they are friends and else friends. I'm sorry, I can't hear. I can't understand a word of what you're saying. So uh, maybe try writing it in the chat. Can you hear me now? 
you both are doing? I still can't understand you. Uh, anyone? Any ideas? Oh, I think we can uh, form a matrix with like uh, the element A I J such that uh, if I is connected to J, then it is one. And then in the... Yeah, this is the adjacency matrix of G. Suppose you... Yeah, I'm giving you the adjacency matrix of G. Now, this is a good idea to consider. And what about the assigned... So we are counting number of ways of partitioning A and B. So how do you represent a partition? Basically, suppose two is uh, then the vertex number two is in the uh, in A C. So basically, we uh, we also have the uh, column number two and the row number two. So basically, we have to draw uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines. So suppose two and four are there, then we uh, draw uh, like uh, are you getting my point? Basically, say we shade the second row, second column, and uh, second uh, like fourth column and fourth row. And see the number of ones in the shaded area. Oh no, see the number of ones which are double shaded. Mm, that made no sense to me. Like, what are you trying to achieve? I am also not sure will this help or not, but uh, you supported the matrix ideas, so I thought uh, this is the right direction. I can't even hear you, so... Uh, uh, if some no node is in one room, they are one, if they are zero, else one, yeah. Satyam gave me the... Uh, that's basically the best way of, like the only way of assignment thing if you're working over it. So basically, uh, there are, you make a, a vector of dimension n, with n field x1 to xn, where uh, x1 equals uh, 0 if uh, the ith math math mathematician is in A and 1 if i is in B. So this would be your vector. So this essentially gives you all possible ways of dividing the matrix. Uh, dividing the graph into A and B. So that's all fine. But now, what equations do you get? How do you uh, codify the condition that uh, for each person in A, they have an, uh, for each person in A, they have an even number of neighbors in A, and for each person in B, they have an even number of neighbors in B. You need to write that out in some form. So essentially, you should get one equation for each person. So what are the equations? How do I write them? Like how do is I write the them? Graph G complete. Like no, is it graph a ordered series? No, G is an arbitrary graph. For each a mathematician X I, like if his neighbor A R say X something a1 a2 a3 then we need their sum to be uh, zero uh, we only want the neighbors in so if xi is zero then we only want the neighbors in a so we don't know uh, we might so a already this adjacency matrix a already tells us what the neighbors are it does not tell us which neighbors are in uh, which side for example that that only comes from the vector so but we want some okay uh, let 
this be the x vector can you give me a simple description of this thing uh, a times x where a is the adjacent matrix can you tell me what this vector ought to be well, like what this vector is going to be Like assuming these conditions are satisfied. If possible, could you just quickly review the multiplication of matrices? Oh, by the way, this AX will contain, uh, will give details for the vertices in B. What? Oh, like. If x i and x j are connected, it will be one, and both i and j will be in B, in that a x vector. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat that? Uh, so basically, we get details for uh, person in B because for a it will be zero only, you know, like every element will turn to zero and then will be added. We get information for B. Uh, no, not necessarily. So, A is the adjacency matrix, right? So, uh, the entries of A are... Uh, so, let's uh, write the entries as EIJ, where EIJ is the... Okay, let's just write it as uh, AIJ, where... Why, does, why can't I select the... So the entries in A tell us whether uh, something is a neighbor or not. Uh, Satyam is telling me for every node, how many of its connected nodes are in the same room as it is. Uh, are you sure about that? So let's just uh, write out the vector. Connected, yeah, that's fine. But are you sure that's the right answer? Uh, N1, N N. So this times x1, x2, xn. So just uh, say consider the i thing. Uh, that would be uh, sigma j equals 1 to n uh, aij times uh, xj, right? Uh, this would be yi, where uh, we are assuming this is equal to y1 to y. So we know that yi equals sigma j equals 1 to n aij xj. And aij is 0 if uh, i and j are not connected. So this can simply be represented as uh, uh, j is connected to i, uh, sum over all j such that j is connected to i times uh, of xj. So this is basically the number of neighbors of i in b. This is what you are getting. Is this here that the ith entry in yi is just the number of neighbors of i in b not the same room but in b irrespective of which room the vertex you are choosing is from i think it's a right no b because i'm choosing one for b and all oh, vertices yeah. in a get zero so for vertices in a this just goes to zero we are only counting vertices in b so so what else can you say about the number of neighbors of i in b? Is this going to be a odd or even? How do you know that? It is even. Like no, that's it's even if xi is zero. If xi is one, what if xi is zero? What can you say then? If xi is one, then it is even. So basically, you can uh, write this as xi plus 1 because times something. Because xi plus 1 is guaranteed to be, like if xi is odd, then this is guaranteed to be 0. But 
if x i is even, then this is one times some some other thing. How do you, how do you know how many neighbors i has in b? I has so, in b. We just know right. So if x i is zero, you know how many neighbors i has in a. That's even like that zero. So the number of neighbors i has in b is simply the total number of neighbors i has. Right. If i is in a, like modulo two, we are working modulo. Two. So this is x i plus one times number of neighbors of i, like total number of neighbors of i. The the key point is that the total number of neighbors of i is fixed. Like this is some constant d i. So I'm they, not sure about this step. Uh, like uh, this is equal to total number of uh, neighbors of x j in g, right? This should be j, I guess. No, that's b because x j is zero when uh, x i is in a. So this is b. Like look at the definition of x i. Uh, x i is zero if it, if j is in a. So we are only counting. This is basically sigma j in b. Uh, uh, j adjacent to i x because plus j in a j adjacent to i x j but j for j in a x j is just zero so oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. Okay. So th this is the number of neighbors of i in b and so x i plus uh, so if i equals one then this is guaranteed to be even which give, which is already given by the term x i plus one so if x i is one this goes to zero and if x i is uh, zero then this is actually equal to uh, the equal to di equals degree i. So let d, di equal be the degree of the ith vertex. Then this is actually equal to uh, di. So we put the di in the bracket. So yi is actually equal to di times xi plus one, where di is the degree of i, which is basically a constant, irrespective of which choice of xi you have, times xi plus one. Uh, is this clear? Uh, how did we get this? Uh, how did we get this uh, thing? Uh, you can just case bash. So I can only be uh, so the number of neighbors of I can only be zero or one, right? Uh, 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 sorry, I, X, I could either be in A or I could be in B, right? So yeah, if yeah. I is in B, then we require that this is zero because the number of neighbors of i is zero. So in that case, this I one is zero. If i is in b, this is zero because x i plus one is zero. That's clear, right? But neighbors are not. Oh, oh it's even, right? There are an even but number. Num of and but the neighbors I, of i in g can be odd also. Not in g in b. We are counting in b. This is the number of neighbors of i in b. Like. Which part of B is not clear? Like this is a very clean B. No, how did you get this? Now this is the neighbors of I in G, right? Here. This is B, 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 B. Because no, the neighbors down. in A get cancelled. Because I'm talking down this thing, below thing. Ah, yeah, this is G. This is this is DI. This is a constant. That's the point. DI is the degree of I, total degree of I. Modulo two. Wait, but how will it be a constant? Like as i changes, no, the, changes. the total degree of i is constant, right? The graph g is the same, so the degree oh, of i, I is the same, yeah. right? And oh, so the key point is the number of neighbors of. Uh, so the total degree is just uh, degree of i in a and plus degree of i in b. So the total number of neighbors I has is the sum of the neighbors it has in A plus the sum neighbors it has in B. And we know that the number of neighbors it has in A is even, in case I is even, which is the critical case. In that case, this, this evaluates to one and this evaluates to zero in that case. So in that case, uh, DI equals DIB. That's the point. That's why we can write DI here. So basically if XI equals zero, this equals DI and if XI equals one, this equals zero. Uh, Can you wait for 
One minute, let me think about this. Does anyone else have any problems with this? Oh, you said like when xi is zero, it is like di. So when xi is zero, or uh, it's the element is in a, right? When xi is in zero, the element i is in a, and this a x counts the number of neighbors it has in b. And from this equation, we get the, the number of neighbors it has in B is equal to the number of neighbors it has in total because the number of neighbors it has in A to, is equal to zero. Got it now. That yeah. So is is that clear now? Like okay, what is this di x i plus one? This is like number of neighbors of element in A in the graph G, right? Yeah. Uh, th this is just a. Uh, this is just the entry yi for like yeah. ax. So and yi sorry. is like that. No? Yi is this yeah. because it's the number of neighbors in B. So let's Wait. write this in vector oh. form. How is this the number of neighbors in B? Like the element is in A, no? No, if the element is in A, the number of neighbors it has in B is di. So if the element is in A, xi plus 1 evaluates to 1. And di equals di is equal to the number of elements it has in B because the number of elements it has in A is even, so that's zero. So di equals di B. Do you get that? This sounds confusing. Why will A even have neighbors in B? By the way, I mean, it. I'm talking about all neighbors in G, right? So okay. for okay. all neighbors in G, basically before you cut the edges between A and B, so A has some neighbors in A and some neighbors in B. And the total number of neighbors in G is Di. And the number of these neighbors in A is zero because it's okay. even. Okay. So okay. It, it, okay. It, it is equal to the number of neighbors in B. So basically the reason we are using Di is that we want this thing to be a constant, not something depending on like the vector itself. And so what about the, the neighbors between A and B, which are between them? No, we forget them, right? Those don't matter. So A how and do you B are disjoint. What? Then uh, how, like degree of I is normal, degree of this DI is normal, right? Like you are not- yeah, That's a normal degree. degree. So see, if x if i is in b we are already done because this equals zero is that fine yeah if i is in a this equals di is that fine yeah and if i is in a di equals dib is that fine no this is not fine what about the uh, edge like this three two one yeah so those are the neighbors between uh, those are the those are specific spe uh, those are specifically the edges that we are counting, right? We only know that the number of uh, edges it has inside A is even. So the degree in A is even. And uh, so the degree in B, which is which is the number of these edges that we are counting, that is specifically what we are counting, right? Because we want the we want the number of neighbors of I in B, which is no. specifically this. So degree that, of I in B is the like uh, degree of C three in B is like these uh, vertices. No, you, you have a vertex in A, right? The degree of I in B is the number of neighbors it has in B. So it's the number of edges that's connected to B from this vertex. And the number of edges it's connected to inside A is even. So the total number of edge, the number of edges it's connected to inside B is equal to the total number of edges it has, which is equal to DI. You said every vertex within A has even degree, right? So we yeah. will, uh, suppose we are considering B. So we will consider only vertices of B. Why will we consider about A? Dude, I is in A, okay? Uh, you, you have an original graph G, which has a lot of vertices. And we are choosing some partition of this into two sets, okay? Yeah. So now the total degree of this uh, vertex that's ending up in A is the sub, sub, is the total number of neighbors it has in A plus the total number of neighbors it has in B. Like the, that was what it was before you drew this circle. So that's what it is now. And 
what we know is that the number of neighbors it has in A is even. That's the condition that's given. So the total degree it has is equal to the degree, uh, the number of neighbors it has in B. And the number of neighbors it has in B is what we are trying to count. Oh, yeah, I guess everyone should have understood this by now, I guess. I spent a lot of time on this. Uh, okay, so we got this, we got a simple expression for this. We want to write this in matrix form now. So let me, let me clear the board. And Uh, so we had this AX equals uh, uh, DIX uh, XI plus one, uh, this, uh, sorry, D1, X1 plus one and so on. Uh, and the thing is, uh, uh, let's define two matrices. Uh, capital D is the matrix with D1, D2, Dn across the diagonal and zero everywhere else. And uh, the next problem we will be solving is uh, the LMAO problem proposed by Chantan. Uh, the last problem that I posted in that problem. Uh, so this is the, I'm at defining this matrix and this vector, which is T1, Dn. So the reason I want to do this is that uh, is so that AX equals uh, uh, DIXI should equals uh, equal DX plus D. Do you understand how I'm getting this? So yeah. this just gives you the DIXI and this gives you the DX because we can distribute. So DIXI plus one equals uh, DIXI plus DI. So these DIs give you give, give you the D vector and the DIXI equals DX. So we can rewrite this as A plus DX equals D. So we finally we got a vector equation. Uh, so any X satisfying this equation is a valid solution and vice versa. So we basically want to count the number of solutions to this equation. Now, what uh, was A? A was the adjacency matrix, right? Oh. So we want to count the number of solutions to this particular equation. And uh, so we need to do two things. The first thing is that uh, the null space of, so the number of solutions to uh, this equation is a positive uh, uh, to, this is called the homogeneous version of the same equation. Uh, the number of solutions to this is guaranteed to be a positive power of two. Uh, because this is a subspace of F2, like the solution space, because I already told you that the like this is a kernel of this matrix, right? So it has to be a subspace or oh. in a different way, if X1 and X2 are two solutions, then X1 plus X2 is also a solution to A plus DX equals zero. Uh, this is similar to that thing we did in the first day. Uh, how, is, how, how did you replace D by zero? Uh, I'm not, I've not replaced it. I, I'm just considering a different equation. I'm just considering that uh, I'm, this is a different equation. The idea is that uh, uh, given any solution in this, given a particular solution XP uh, for this particular equation, the general solution is going to be uh, XP plus uh, 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 XC, where XC is a solution to this equation. Oh, yeah. And why so, does this equation have an two key power number solution? Yeah, so the first thing is that it uh, the space of solutions is a subspace, right? 
like uh, because if x1 and x2 are two solutions then x1 plus x2 is also a solution to this second equation and why is x1 x2 a solution no no yeah, i'm just saying if x1 and x2 are solutions then x1 plus x2 is guaranteed to be a solution so this is a subspace and we just have to show that the dimension of this subspace is at least one then it then it's guaranteed to have two to the power d solutions so we need to show that this dimension of this subspace is at least one and we need to find at least one particular solution xp and then we'd be done how are we done we also have to consider the conditions we had on set b we are only looking at a no we we did conditions for both a and b right because uh, if x i is in b then this evaluates to zero as required we did conditions for both a and b uh, when we computed this equation so any solution to this equation is actually a solution to the original problem i'm not sure when did we did it for b uh you can just look here right so uh this was counting the number of common neighbors in b right and if xi is in if i is in b uh then xi equals 1 xi plus 1 equals 0 uh di into xi plus 1 equals 0 uh di into xi plus 1 equals 0 which is the number of neighbors xi i has in b number of neighbors of i in b so this already gives you the condition for b oh so we want this a x bar matrix to be the zero matrix do we want this to be the zero matrix no i'm telling you we want this to be the dx plus d matrix because See the things I wrote already evaluate to zero if I, I is in B and evaluate to di if I is in A, which is basically what we want. We want it to evaluate to the number of neighbors of I in B, irrespective of what I x i is. If this was by construction. Can you just wait for one minute? Let me think about this. By the way, is this a minus d instead of a plus d? Does not matter. Modulo two minus one plus are the same. Oh, oh, right. Actually, now it seems that we have a, the, the, we are only imposing the condition on on b and not on a. No, we are we are imposing the condition on both, right? We already considered the cases where i is in A, which is which gives us the condition for A, and we considered the case where i is in B, which gives us the condition for B. And this thing holds irrespective of which side i is in. So we get conditions for both of them. So we just have to show that uh, uh, this equation has at least one solution, right? We have to show that this has at least one solution and we have to show that uh, the space of solutions to this has dimension at least one. So, I think one... Have, so basically to the second equation, the uh, all ones vector is a valid solution. To, so this has dimension at least one as required. The all ones vector is a valid solution because, see, d represents the degree. So, if you multiply this by the all ones vectors, you, uh, basically a times the all ones vector is d. Oh. Since, uh, uh, since, uh, okay, let me. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, so you want, so you want di to be even, which is not like necessary. 
what do you mean uh, no so a times i is d uh, let me give you a so like if all are ones then all are in b so you want no. di to be even no no if all are one, forget about a and b now we are only solving this equation and for the second homogeneous version of the equation the all ones is a valid solution uh, because uh, a times the all ones vector is the all degrees vector because uh, remember what the all uh, uh, this vector is uh, this times the all ones vector gives you suppose this is y1 yn uh, in that case uh, yi equals sigma uh, j adjacent to i uh, a i j times 1 which is which is just sigma j adjacent to i a i j which is just d i right so this gives you y i equals d i multiplying a y 1 because it just it chooses it just evaluates the number of positive uh, number of ones in the ith row which is simply the degree of the ith vertex and this is also equal to di by definition uh, d times one right because uh, d just has these things in its diagonal so it, it, it multiplying okay. this by the all ones vectors gives you the model so the so all ones is a valid solution so uh, basically adding the all ones vectors to a uh, vector to the the specific solution is basically saying you okay so if you have some set of mathematicians in a and some set of mathematicians in b you can switch the rooms and you'll still have a valid solution that's basically what this is saying does that make sense yeah because adding the all ones vector to a vector that you already have is basically switching the rooms of all the math mathematicians so uh, this basically tells you that the dimension is at least one so Basically, if you have a solution XP, then you can just switch the rooms and get a new solution. So you, you will have at least two solutions and you are going to have a power of two solutions. But you just uh, need to show that some solution exists. This is the trickiest part of the question to prove that some solution exists. I think uh, all this multiple, uh, like uh, the, is this multiplying by adjacency matrix, uh, like is this standard or is this, a, is, is this also a tricky thing in the question? No, adjacency matrix is the most standard thing in the question. Although, I mean, this uh, adjacency matrix pop up all the time. Like many, at least three or four of the problems I gave in the set probably use adjacency matrices in some form or the other. Adjacency matrices are very useful things. You use them all the time. For example, if you have walks of length K, uh, then the then A to the power K actually gives you the uh, that ij entry of a to the power k is simply the number of walks of length k from i to j. So there are many uses of adjacency matrix. So that is actually the most standard part of the question. Uh, the most difficult part is pro proving the existence of at least one solution. Uh, but oh, uh, so isn't that a direct, like if we, oh sorry, it is not. No, proving the existence of a solution is actually pretty hard. So you'll need a new lemma for that. I'll go, go over that. So, okay. So once we have one solution, uh, any solution to this uh, a plus d equals x, a, a plus d times x equals zero is a way of switching to any other solution. So if for any two particular solutions to this equation, the difference is guaranteed to be a solution to this a plus d x equals zero. So Basically, the number of solutions to this equation should equal the number of solutions to this equation. So Can you repeat one. how? Okay, so once you have, suppose you already have some specific solution xp to this. Okay, so uh, in that case, adding any solution xc of this equation gives you a solution xp plus xc of this equation. Because yes. it plus xc equals zero. So the number of solutions of uh, this equation is at least as large as this. And in the other direction, if you have any two solution, uh, uh, x1 and x2, uh, then x1 minus x2 is a solution of this equation. 
uh, or rather if you have any solution x then uh, x plus xp is a solution of this equation right so that gives you a way from translating from solutions of this equation to solutions of this equation so both inequalities hold they have the same number of such or equivalently you can think of this as a bijection so uh, this sends xc to xc plus uh, xp and this sends uh, x to uh, x plus xp and these are uh, inverses because xc plus xp plus xp equals xc because xp plus xp cancels out what are we proving right now i'm just proving that these two have the same number of solutions for right now i mean uh, i was asked why these two have the same number of solutions so now we only want to prove that this has some particular solution we want to prove that a plus t times x equals d has some solution so for this we we'll need what's called grover's lemma and this is actually equivalent to grover's lemma by the way so i'll just when tell you about the grover's lemma uh what Uh, when did you told the grover's lemma i haven't told you the grover's lemma yet i i am okay. going to write it out and prove it now could you just say uh, once again what about d and d small d uh, capital d was a matrix with uh, d1 uh, d1 d2 and dn on the diagonal and small d was a vector with entries d1 d2 uh, dn okay is that okay uh, okay now Okay, basically, Grover's lemma is actually <laughs> equivalent to this problem. The Grover's lemma states that if M is a matrix, so we are working over F two. The Grover's lemma is also over F two. It only holds over F two. If M is a uh, if M is a Uh, M is a symmetric matrix. Then its diagonal is in the image. No one did not know whether you discussed Robert's lemma or not. Yeah, I have no idea at all. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so Robert's lemma is actually equivalent to this. It basically says if M is a symmetric matrix, where I uh, think of M as A plus D, in that case, uh, the, its diagonal is in its image. So uh, the diagonal is D one D two D N. It's in the image D one D two D N. That means what does it mean? Different. Its diagonal is it in the image? So like what's its image? Uh, oh, the image is the set of all vectors that can be obtained by multiplying the matrix by some vector. So an equation like this How means that a plus d is symmetric. What? Uh, a plus d right. a is symmetric because i is connected to j if and only if j is connected to i. So a i j equals a j i. Oh, and right. And are the and in a are the diagonal zero or are they one? What? In a the diagonals are zero or one. Oh, the in a the diagonals are all zero, but in in d there is some random diagonal. So the matrix we are thinking of is M equals a plus d. The diagonal of M is basically d one d two d n, which is small d. So the By the way, yeah, that German graph theory problem also uses Robert's lemma. Like the proof over F, you can obviously prove that combinatorially. You can also prove this combinatorially. And in fact, the proof of a combinatorial proof of like USMO two thousand eight is equivalent to a proof of Robert's lemma. That's so funny. Yeah, I know. Like 
that's a in fact that's a funny way of proving robbers lemma uh, so to prove robbers lemma you need another lemma first uh, this is a bit more linear algebraic in nature uh, this is a more general lemma which holds for any linear algebra thing so uh So suppose uh, T is a linear map from B to W, then uh, W is in the image of T, if and only if uh, uh, Let's see how to how they face this. Uh, uh, shy of uh, oh, uh, I need dual vectors to state this. Wait, actually, I don't think I have. Given you enough linear algebra theory to actually prove Prover's lemma. Just uh, assume it. Yeah, sure. You, you just assume that uh, this is this is well known. You just say that this is well known, and you are done. Or to show that there's one solution, there's like just simple way by in just induction. Yeah, whatever. You can probably find one solution using graph theoretic methods or something. I don't know. I mean, basically, you can assume Grover's lemma is well known. Uh, you could look up a proof of Grover's lemma. I think if you search Grover's lemma, you will get a proof of Grover's lemma. Let me just check that. I can, I can find one and send. Yeah, there are various proofs of Grover's lemma on like uh, AOPS or whatnot. Is Grover's lemma in napkin? Uh, I don't think Grover's lemma is there in napkin. It's a, it's not a college math pack. It's a Olympiad math pack. So you'll find it in AOPS. I think Evan wrote some proof of Grover's lemma, but I don't think it's in napkin. I think it's is it in that uh, uh, OTIS book thing? I don't know. I don't think it's in the book. Uh, like, right. I, I, yeah. But it I is in his linear algebra handout, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'll just find that. Uh, but uh, that's, oh, that was, no, I, I'm talking about the handout for like. Ah, yeah, yeah. internal I one, there public. is. Yeah, I don't think you ask for this public, so uh, you can find one on AOPS, it's fine. But you will need to know some amount of linear algebra before you can actually understand the proof. So uh, probably read some linear algebra first. And I guess I spent over one hour, so I guess uh, I won't be discussing any other problem. Or, um, Maybe I should give a quick proof of Shantanu's problem, uh, or maybe not. Uh, okay, maybe I'll give you a hint. What's the inductive or proof hint. of uh, this uh, uh, existence of a solution? Uh, is there an I, I don't know of an inductive proof. But yeah, yeah, there I, is. I, have, I won't be surprised if one exists because so could like you please tell me what the expect or degree remove yeah, it? Yeah. Yes, like pick a vertex with odd degree, exclude it, find a partition for the remaining stuff. Then like, because it's odd, you can add it to one of the sides. Oh yeah. All right, that's, that makes sense. And if everything is even, you already have one. Yes, that works.
like will you make a new meeting for the stuff about the closing or just this continues you can't hear him you are not oh wait a bit or it can be you are on mute can we get a short break so like should we leave the meeting has ritam gone or what should we do right now uh, atul like i don't know askar ji we just ping everyone join the verb link for the closing ceremony so yeah, so know. you guys oh, so I, i got unmuted i don't know why i unmuted myself so uh, we'll have the closing on this link itself we we are just going to wait for other people to join In the meanwhile, you can have a break. Uh, we'll we'll start. Will ceremony meet? Will be? I could go. Like we'll take some photos or something. Uh, we might play some games, or, or maybe we'll move to Discord to play. Uh, I guess for the closing ceremony, I'll just thank my sponsors and uh, take some photos. Yeah. We'll Wait, start the ceremony. What? There are multiple now. You just made it sponsors. Oh, only sponsor. Only yeah. one sponsor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes so much sense. It sounds better when you say sponsors. <laughs> yeah, yes. 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 Yeah. MIT is sponsor. We are not sponsor. swimming in a pool of money. Don't worry. MIT is a sponsor, right? right. MIT sponsored you. No, 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 no. MIT does not sponsor me. Sorry. Oh, like who? Who sponsored? I'll, I'll ask MIT for sponsorship next year. Is... Camp sponsored camp? Like we don't have money. <laughs> you will be in the college. OMC oh, sponsored camp. Yes, OMC provided us their G Suite for. Ah, right. Collected. Yeah, yeah. We need to thank. For, but OMC also gets money from MMC, right? So it... yeah. <laughs> Even OMC G Suite is from MMC. So basically, MMC sponsors everything. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah no, MIT sponsors the Zoom, right? Hmm. <laughs> That means I'm like he- Helsinki <laughs> University. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, that's what uh he used, right? Oli, yeah. All right. He used his own Zoom, which is from his. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. And we'll start the closing ceremony then. Yeah. feedback forms no i have not made any feedback forms we want to give give feedback uh, we have a feedback channel on discord you can post anonymously or like why do you want to give feedback up oh, right actually that's a good idea because i do plan to host camp next year so yeah please post whatever feedback you have on discord i don't want to like create forms and like force you to give give feedback 
uh, what if we uh, see that next year we are not in the camp and we are not even allowed to submit the form? What? Uh, uh, this was not the I mean, first. I mean, this was the first quote unquote first camp ever, but there was an unofficial TC last year. This is technically a continuation of that, even though this is oh. kind of an. Uh, yeah, I think I can give you guys direct entry next year. Uh, I came up with that only. Oh, by the way, I meant something else. I meant like what to do if someone wants to do a negative. Uh, oh, right. Application sucks. So any ideas about how to improve application? Because I don't just want to let every random person in because a lot of people don't have like the, like enough maturity to be able to follow the camp. You might want because to we got a lot of applications. So I you can't just get rid of camp, but get rid of the application. So I, I need some different ideas. Different Maybe ideas. you can make the number of question of the application a big and like the question I'm bearing from even PRMO level to IMO three. So that might help. Well, that would be too many questions. Like people did not do three questions. I think the questions need to be easier because this year's questions were probably too difficult. I think you can this make it, it similar like... to OTIS application. I mean, I don't think people will be writing five or six questions to get into a camp. So I think yeah. you need to stick with a fewer questions, but <laughs> yeah, that open problem sticks for the camp. There were no open Only problems. Only Geo, and then only Combi Geo, and then no one can solve the problems. No, there were no yeah. open problems. All the problems were actually. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure if there's enough maturity to understand Shuvam's lecture. That's kind of. I mean, I know a fair amount of category theory, but I could not follow his category theory lecture last year. And I, 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 I couldn't follow any of his lectures this year either. Uh, yeah, his lectures are pretty difficult to follow. I mean, to be fair, my lectures are probably also pretty difficult to follow. I think, yeah, I think a couple of lectures were hard. So that's fine only, like, something should cater to the more mature as well. Is this streaming? Uh, yes. yes, we want you to end the stream. Yeah, that's No, that's no, 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 I have no problem. But I was just asking for random. So he I wants to send. I, I, mean, I should call Atman sir. Atman sir will come. Interesting. No, we should invite Atman sir, right? Yeah, yeah, we should. Wait, let me. Let me try to. I'll call Tranjul sir. Yeah, Atman sir is online, so let me call Atman sir. Is RG sir going to give like a talk about the end of camp? <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> also, that was sarcastic. Please, nobody make me talk. Like RG has already committed to talking, so like he can't go back on his word. It's even recorded. Now. What even? <laughs> Where are the people? Uh... Yeah, I don't think I don't think Atman is actually online even though it shows he's online. 
Hello, okay, people. Turn on your cameras. He's shown online 90%. Well, I was not the only non-Indian here, but I think he's the only non-Indian who actively participated. Like, uh, I mean, there were... Uh, uh, we took in some... Uh, I think there were some people from Bangladesh, Nepal, and Philippines. Yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't think they, I, I never, oh, right. Yeah, he's from Bangladesh, I think. And I don't think the two Nepali people joined. Did they? They, they, I think they joined a few, maybe, but maybe they just couldn't cope up with the difficulty. Oh, uh, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, anyone else who wants to turn on the cameras for a photo? Okay, by the way, how do you take these photos on Zoom? I think it does like normal screenshot oh, not work. Just screenshot. Uh, no, but I need to. Oh, I, uh, there's this gallery view thing. Yeah. Right. Only four of you, like. I want at least 10. Uh, is Pranjal even online? I don't think so. Pr Pranjal is always offline shown, but he can come online. Atman is always online shown, but he can be offline. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, I'll actually call uh, Pranjal. Just. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Atman is coming, he said. 